Kenya, they sample our meal, they go to our training camp, maybe in Iten, and they train, and they discipline themselves on how to be great. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, and 20, up to 27, and see what discipline means. 1 Corinthians Chapter 9, we'll start from 24. How you discipline yourself for a crown. We are being told, do you know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who completes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now, they will do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we are, but we for unperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself shall become disqualified. So the Bible is urging us that even giving an example of athletes, they go to the training camp they discipline themselves they look at what they are eat they don't just eat and they also exercise it is something that you do with the discipline maybe you wake up at five do your marathon then come back eat well in the evening you have a training session why because you are aiming for something maybe you are training for an olympic event so you have to be disciplined and you are being told now if these people do this and they do it for a perishable crown. What about you? Yeah? You as a disciple of Christ, you need also to be disciplined. You need to be very focused in what you want to achieve. So, in our text, we have seen pe two people who want to follow Christ. One is very quick to promise, and the other one, he wants to follow, but he has something he wants to do. So, when Jesus called his first disciples, he spoke the simple words, follow me. In Mark chapter 1 verse 16 verse 17, we are told, and as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. So, Christ was walking and he needed disciples. So in Mark, we are being told that as he was walking, he saw Simon and Andrew and he said, simple thing, follow me. And they followed him. And we can read from the account of the gospel how they left their life were. It was not simple. You cannot say, because now you are following Christ, things will be rosy. No, they will be hard. But since it's a command, and you know who has given you that command, you know that even when we have difficulties, you will still, you will be able to overcome. Paul urges us in the, to be imitators of him as he was of Christ. That is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Of all things that people have said it's a hard thing to do is what Paul said that imitate me you know by imitating somebody someone is saying live the way I have lived you know and as you live how I have lived you will have achieved what I have achieved which was to follow Christ or to imitate Christ I don't think many of us can say that with confidence we cannot say oh you know imitate me as I follow. Yes, we try, but because we are human beings, we fall short. And so, I myself, let me speak about myself, I will have difficulty telling somebody, you know, Gavin, my son, follow me or imitate me as I imitate Christ. Because I know I have my short fallings. And because we live in the same room, he has seen them almost daily. Maybe I am not as prayerful as I should be and even if I tell him you know you should be more prayerful 
And he goes like, oh, come on. I wake up before you. I prepare for school. Go, leave you sleeping. I don't see you. Be. So for me to tell him to be, to imitate me, as I have imitated Christ, I, it will be hard order for me. Because I know I have my own weaknesses. But Paul urges us to be imitators of him as he was of Christ. Which I think to most of us will have a hard time. But it's something that is achievable by his grace. So Jesus never followed the masses. It is the masses that followed him. Let us seek to emulate our master as we are just from just a good example. We are being told in verse 18, and when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. That is a stark contrast from what we see nowadays. For example, we are just from a concluded general election. And you know, people have changed the way they were doing their campaigns. Kitambo, a politician, will say, on date 18, we are going to a campaign rally in Uhuru Park. And so it's up to you if you want to hear what the politician want to make your way into what? Uhuru Park there and listen to that, uh, whatever they have to say. Or even get someone, let's say a place like Tronoka Ground in Mombasa, and they say on this particular day, you should come and we'll have a political rally. But they have changed that. Nowadays, it's the politician who come where they know there's a crowd. For example, in the just concluded general election, at the roundabout there, we always have a ready crowd. We have people who maybe don't have work and they have just come at the stage and they are just standing there. Maybe they are seeing vehicles go and what and they are just looking people they do their business. We have business people who are there doing their own businesses. We have Makangas. Uh, we have a terminus there. It's a very busy place. And if you come and stop your motorcade, because politicians have motorcade, they stop that motorcade, obviously they'll cause a traffic jam and they have a crowd. That's what politicians love. And they will come and give their message. But our Jesus is different. He has a crowd, but he's walking from the crowd and going to the other side which is I find funny because the area he's living he's living in this area and going to another area he'll find that those guys when he performs miracle uh, there's this man who's demon possessed and he'll cast demons from him and he'll tell the uh, evil spirits to go to the pigs and the pigs will run and go to the sea and die and the people who are railing the pigs they go back to the city and they say, what has happened? Those two demon-possessed people, they were healed. And then the evil spirit came to our pigs. And the pigs ran violently and jumped to the sea. And they died. And people are like, oh, yes, you have done something good. But we don't think we need you here. Go. So he leaves a crowd. But down the line, where he goes, he does a good work. And they say, no, we don't want you here. Can you please leave our seat? So, with miracles abounding, it may seem a ruling to outsiders to follow Christ. But to the true follower, it was to, for sure no mean task. So, here comes a guy in verse 19. We are being told that a certain scribe, a certain scribe, Say to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. A scribe, maybe just to give a, a small history of the scribe, is that there were people who are used to writing the text, maybe from the Old Testament. They were not a distinct group, let's say, like the Pharisees. You know, the Pharisees, they had their own custom, they were recognizable even from afar. They are even known and they are distinct group. And even the Sadducees, they have their own set of beliefs. Even looking at that, you can say that's a Sadducee. But scribes were different. They were just people 
who are dependent on the rich people for their upkeep. Maybe they'll be hired as people who will be writing maybe correspondence, you know, write to the governor or come and transcribe this text to this. And so they were learned people. They are people who are going to school. They are distinct. And because they can work to the rich people, they have influence. And so uh, they can say we are educated and we have influence. And so maybe looking at the disciples of Jesus and seeing that uh, what we have here, actually these are normal fishermen who are following of Christ and we have tax collectors, just ordinary people. Maybe they thought, hmm, if we come and follow him, automatically I come number two because it is Jesus, the master, and then me because I am educated, I can do stuff, and then this other one, they will follow. So maybe he saw and saw, hmm, I can jump the queue because the people who are here they are just ordinary people. There are people who are not educated as me. There are people who are just fishermen, ordinary people. So if I come, at least Jesus can be delegating uh, some of the stuff to me and saying, uh -huh, you, because you have the ability, do that. But as we know, in following Christ, it is different. Because as he will say to the second one, he says that foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Yes, you may come and follow him, expecting this and this, but you will be disappointed. So, uh, as we proceed, in Matthew chapter 26, from 36, 46, we have the account of Jesus telling his disciples to watch and pray with him. But where? It was an uphill task. It is the last days. He's, up, he's almost going to be crucified. And they are there at the garden. And he takes his three most clo close followers of him. And they go a little bit. And even them, they are being told, okay, you stay here and pray. And he goes further ahead. And as he's praying, agonizing, praying over the cup, if it's possible for the cup to be removed, it is maybe they had a very rough time. The day was sunny. They have had that certainly Jesus is being looked by his enemies and anytime he may be arrested he has not tried to paint a rosy picture he has told them the reality the son of man must be given to evil people and he'll be crucified and on the that, day, that day rise it's a hard day having walked and done ministry during the day, having agonized the work of ministry, it is at night. At least, even if they don't have a house, they should be somewhere, even if some stone, to sleep. But Christ is telling them, be awake and pray. Pray about the situation ahead. The road is rough. Even me, as your leader, I'm going there ahead and praying. And they prayed, and when he came back, they were sleeping. You can imagine they are not sleeping on couches because they have had a hard drive, a hard uh, time. They're sleeping just outside. Maybe we have mosquitoes because it's a, a garden, has trees, and all those vegetations, or even flies. So, it was not rosy following Christ. And people from outside, they can look and think, hmm, if only I was follow Christ like this guy, maybe he assumed life will be simple. I will have favors. 
I can ask for miracles anytime I want. Because if he can perform to others, what about his disciples? So, Jesus never told the scribe not to follow him, but told him the reality of what it was to follow him. He didn't want him to come and discover, as Kenyans say, we took a ground, me different. You know, you may have things in your head. Maybe he thought, as I said, that following Christ, if the multitude of 5,000 can be fed, what about his disciples? What about these people who are always with him? Is it not a good life with him? Is it not good to have somebody you can call in any time? Somebody who is perfect? Someone who does not uh, maybe sin? But Christ never said, don't follow me. He just gave him a reality check. It's like, okay, you want to follow me? Let me tell you the reality check. And this was the reality check. That foxes have holes and birds of the hair have nests. But the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. So he leaves him to him. Yes, you want to follow me. Fine. You can come if you are willing. But the situation, the real situation is, I don't have a house. I do ministry walking, going from one village to the next. I even don't know where I lodge in the evening. I don't know what I'll eat in the evening. But if you are willing, you can follow me. You know, it's up to you to make that decision. The nature of Jesus' ministry kept him on the move. And so obviously, anyone coming as a follower was required to be quite flexible in his movement and in his lifestyle. Jesus has been labeled the itinerant rabbi, meaning he's like a hawker who we call Malemali who goes from one village to the next, hawking his staff. So he was not a rabbi who was maybe uh, his location is Capernaum and his church is there. So that when you come and you want to see Jesus, you go there to that ground, to that church and found him there, ask him questions and if you have uh, issues, you can sort. I was having a very funny conversation this week about a neighbor of mine in Mlolongo. He was just an ordinary woman struggling with life. So someone tells me, oh, you know, I have a client who's coming, but even as he comes, uh, she'll pop in in that house. Uh, that lady who used to, hear, uh, to stay here nowadays prays for people. And I was like, prays for people? I said, I was having a hard time believing that actually that lady prays for people and they pay. And I say, just wait and see. And true to his word, the lady came and went straight to that house. And then even jogging my mind, I noticed that actually it's true. I've been seeing people come, even on their way to work, and pop in, in that room, get, get consultancy, if you may call it that way, and then proceed to their work. And so, maybe it would have been simple if Christ was based somewhere where people will come and see him. But no, he was moving from one village and to the next. And to me, I think it works to its advantage and we have a lot of lessons we can learn us as Christians. Because reading the book of John, when I got born again, the first very month, I was told the best place to start the word is the book of John. If we start from the book of John, it gives, it gives you a good, solid foundation of your salvation. So there I am, 
uh, reading the book of John, seeing the way Christ is doing his ministry. And one thing that strikes me is that he keeps saying that he came to do the will of his father. And he even seemed to be working on a timeline. You know, my time has not come. Don't go and tell anybody. Don't go and show yourself. You know, even his brothers are telling him, you know, you want to be a public figure. And here you are. Why don't you go and show yourself? Because nobody who wants to be a public figure operates from the periphery. You have to come forward and show yourself to the people. And people can see the kind of person you are. And so maybe they can glorify you. But he was saying no. And when the time came, now he went public. He would even, uh, last week we saw, he healed a leper and said, go and show yourself to the priest. You know? Even us, we have a very important lesson in that. That if Christ was all about his father, working on a timeline, even you when you got saved, I think God has called you for a purpose. You can purpose to live your life in a way that you have something to achieve and it's achievable because of the grace of God and your singular purpose as a disciple of Christ is doing that which Christ has called you. So, by saying that foxes have holes, he does not mean that he has nowhere to sleep. He had a lot of friends. Peter was his friend. His house was always open for him. Uh, Martha and Mary, they were friends with him. He could go and lodge in their place. But the point is, you won't always operate there. He will operate from other areas. So, even for us, you know, we pride ourselves in a good way as a church that goes out of comfort zone to go there and preach to people, to do one-to-one, -to, -one, to do open air, uh, to evangelize people. When we go there and we are sharing our faith, we should be truthful. Let us not go and paint a picture that's not true, telling people that you know when you accept to be saved from today, you won't have problems in your life. Things will be smooth because that's not true. Tell them the reality. If Christ himself is telling them the reality, why should you lie to somebody so that they be saved? We have uh, cases of people who are told that, you know, when you accept Christ, uh, it will be smooth for you and things, problem will cease. You won't have difficulties in your life. And they come. And they start living their life. They accept Christ. And they're like, oh, I was duped. I was told that things will be rosy. But look, I had issues. I even have more. I thought things, that life will be simple. But it has turned to be very hard. So, even for us, if we, when we go and do this one-to-one, -one, it is good. I'm not saying we lie. But I'm saying it's good to be of one mind, knowing that we are telling people the truth, we are telling them the reality, you are not saving so that your life can be uh, easy. No, you are being saved from the damnation of hell. It's the bigger picture that's important. Uh, the disciples of Christ, when they were sent out, they came very excited because they could cast demons out of people. And Christ them, oh yes, that's good. But the bottom line, what should make you happy is that your names are in the book of life. And that's even what we want to tell people. Even when we want them to come and be disciples of Christ, we want to tell them it's the bigger picture that is of importance. We want you to be assured that when your time comes to leave the earth and you go to the other side, you won't go to hell, but you'll go heaven so the second guy uh, that we read uh, then verse 21 another of his disciples said to him Lord let me first go and bury my father but Jesus said to him follow me and let me let the dead bury the dead 
This man may have wanted to fulfill the oldest son's duty to bury the father. It does not mean necessarily mean that his father was dead and he wanted to bury him before he came to follow Christ. No. Maybe we have explanations of what he may have meant by that. One of the explanations is that it was required for the oldest son to bury their father. So he may have been asking for an indefinite period of time. A time whereby his father is aged but is still living. And so he will wait until his time comes and passes all and he buries him and put things in order and come and follow Christ. In any event, Jesus' answer makes clear that this request would have involved putting tradition or the disciples' own desire ahead of serving Jesus. Jesus has called you to come and follow. You should follow immediately. You know, we have had it um, even last week when we are doing uh, evangelism. You give somebody the word, you explain to him the word slowly, and they come, and they are convicted, and they say, I've had you, but I want to make that decision today. Give me some time, and I'll make that decision. In a way, they are rejecting salvation. They are saying, you know, you have gone and find somebody abrupt. You don't know him. Even you don't know next time whether you go that area. But he's telling you, he'll think. Does that mean you'll find him? Of course he knows you won't find him. So in short, he'll simply... Receiving, uh, refusing salvation. So, even for those who say, uh, Christ, I've had you, like this disciple, uh, but I have stuff that I have yet to do, which I am planning to go and achieve. You know, when I was growing, I could hear people preaching. And there was a general consensus among the unsaved that salvation is for the, is for the elderly. That we are young, we have not lived our happy life, we have not uh, enjoyed our life to the fullest. And so there was this salvation that is for the old people. We young people, we have a lot to achieve. So it's like salvation is somewhere you go to retire. It is the same with this attitude of this disciple. Actually, he's being called the other, meaning that he is different from the twelve, the twelve who are following closely. He was a distance, somebody following, uh, following Jesus from afar. So, what does Jesus, Jesus mean when he say, let the dead bury the dead? The Jews, when they speak about the dead, uh, the Jews used the word dead to express indifference toward a thing or to express that something has no influence over them. In Romans chapter 7 verse 4, Paul tells us that mm, we became dead to the law, meaning the law has no power over us. We are dead to it. Also in Romans chapter 11, we are being told to reckon ourselves to be dead to sin. Okay, actually, let me read it. It says, likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead, to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Means that the law and sin have no influence or control over us. So, Muyahudi akisema, you are dead, ama akisema, akitumiejin are dead, they will mean that something has no influence. So, people of the world are dead to Christ. When you go, na una shuhudia watu pale hii, sometimes you get, I won't say tickled, 
but to get baffled at that lack of even that conviction of sin. This week, I was talking to someone, one of the, my customers, and he was telling me the wisdom of this world. And I'm trying him to take him the gospel me, way, but he just comes with some funny things that he has quoted, and he believes in them. And he said, you know, all of us are mad. It is just the <laughs> capacity or the percentage of madness, you know. There's no happiness. Actually, we were arguing about alcohol because saying alcohol is good because it makes you to remember your problems. And I'm telling him, yes, you forget, but when the alcohol is over from your head, you come back to your senses and those issues are still there. So that's somebody who is dead. To what? He's dead to Christ, you know? he still comes there and he's convinced and worse off even in ourselves there's no hard person to preach to like the one when he has philosophy and he's using them to defend him you know even when we're being taught by our teacher on how to do evangelism they told us when you go and you find somebody like that tell him okay because you still have to speak to others because you won't make any headway you will argue, argue, argue and you still leave him unsaved so instead of wasting time with that one person is dead to Christ move on to the next not about somebody who is more receptive so they do not see the beauty nor do they hear his voice or desire to follow him. So, people like those, they have decided. But Christ and Asema, in John chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. The people of the world are those whom the Savior described here are the spiritually dead who should bury the physically dead. See Matharao, but God is, Jesus is saying, by saying, let the dead bury the dead, we have people who there who are dead to me. Wanijui, na wataki kunijua. And we have people who there who have died. Let them do the business of the world, which is burying. But then you can ask yourself, Bibile Metuambia, we be obedient to our parents. Is it dis disrespectful by Jesus saying that, you know, uh, disciple Nakumambia, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. No, as I had explained there, see a kwa mekufa. He's somebody just who wanted to go back live the comfortable life alikuwa naishi waiting for his father's time to come and maybe sikuwa kita kufa itafika kufa and he buries him and put so anasema the urgency of what is at hand following Christ kama venye tumeona the first disciples walipo itwa they left even their nets and followed it is an immediate thing unafanya na kumfuata so to the unsaved people of the world nothing is of, atmo of utmost importance other, other than responding to the gospel message. This requires us as a church to preach the gospel. Romans chapter 10 in Asema that uh, okay so once we make the decision to follow Jesus and preach his good news we must deny dead, worldly pursuit and comfort and do the Lord's work. Jesus wants followers, not professors. Unajua, by professor tunamanisha people who go saying, I will follow. But they don't uh, follow through and do. You know, you can be good at saying you'll do but you don't do. Ato Biblia antwambia, there's a son who was told to do. And he said, ah, no problem, I will do. 
but hakufanya lakini mwingine alisema atafanya atafanya lakini akaenda kajirudia akaona hmm nimefanya makosa and actually he came through and did and did what his father wanted to do so verse 21 not that the disciples father had died and wanted to go and dig a grave and bury him no he wanted to remain at the comfort of his father's house care for him till he died and buried him that was not an indefinite that was an indefinite period of time even the word of god urges us in first corinthians 6 1 to 2 that uh, we then as workers together with him also plead with you not to receive the grace of god in vain for the for he says in an acceptable time i have heard you and in the day of salvation i have helped you behold now is the accepted time behold now is the day of your salvation so when the day of salvation in africa you don't make excuses you don't say let me go back and do this one last course ambayo sikwa nimefanya maybe umefanya degree you wanted to do a masters let me go and finish my masters and then I'll come and follow you it is interesting that anakuwa refer to another disciple meaning that he was not a close follower of Christ so as i finish uh, we want to see the marks of a true disciple uh, a true disciple what are these things that you can look and say actually this is a true disciple of Christ and this one we have seven marks of a true disciple na nitawapatia from where tunatoa na pia tusome ndio tuelewe so we'll start at john chapter 8 verse 31 john chapter 8 verse 31 So John chapter 8 verse 31 nasema then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed so the first mark of a disciple is that a disciple continues in the word kama wewe ni disciple wa Yesu Kristo you continue in the word the word of God ndio chakula ya Mkristo and so kama wewe ni mfuasi kama wewe ni mwanafunzi wa Yesu Kristo kwa kila siku you will have your time uh, in the word of God na siku hizi si kama kitambo we are privileged easy smartphone easy v you can carry your bible in terms of an app ambayo una download kwa play store na iko na biblia mzima so you can read even in matatu you can read wherever you are you can also download ile ambayo ni akusikiza and the word of god utaisikia wherever you are so there are no excuses for us one thing that kuna consensus ah uh, ya hii dunia sikuizi ni ati you cannot say that you never had time to read your, uh, the word of god kwa sababu it is even portable it is readily available kitambo people had to wait for sunday waende pale kanisani wasomeo biblia and that was one of the main reason kulikuwa na hizi pentecostal churches because people felt we should be able to read for ourselves why should we only be dependent on somebody i saw a quote somewhere which i considered funny ah uh, but ukiangalia critically it is very true ili sema kuwa facebook is a proof that there was time na ukiangalia ni ukweli because most people they will update their status they will go find time to log into their facebook account uh, read venye wenzao wanasema venye inchi inaenda 
and all those. So, if you had time to go to Facebook and find yourself to Zote, I don't think kuna mwambele ya mungu useme, you never had time. Time ina kuanga, na time hiko ya kufanya, ya kusoma na mungu. So, a disciples continues in the word of God. The second one, John chapter 13, John chapter 13, 34 to 35, 13, 34 to 35 in Asema a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another by this all will know that you are my disciples if you love uh, if you have love for one another so a disciple manifests the love of Christ Kama wewe ni mwanafunzo wa Yesu Kristo, utapenda wengine kama wenye Yesu Kristo, aliwapenda. You will love others. You know, one of the mark of a true church, a true believer, ni upendo mwenye konayo kwa wengine. It will be very funny that somebody ambao unasambuwe ni mkristo, you will find your own uh, kukapeke yako, ikiwa mzuri kuliko kukaa with your fellow believers na hiyo naongea about hii worship kama ya Sunday on Sundays uh, we come here and worship together we have had our, wa- our week, you have seven days in a week you have six days to make a labda out of the church Sunday, it's a day that you should look forward to to come here and fellowship with your fellow brothers actually Ata Acts inaframbia Three things Ambazo zilikuwa muhimu kufanya Ilikuwa nuka fellowship uh, To come together and have communion Na pia kuomba pamoja So we kama ni mkristo Have that uh, Upendo Ambayo inapenda wa kristo wenzako You pray for them Ata usipo waona And also Ukika for long na ujona mtu I think you can look forward and uh, around and say, I've not seen this brother or this sister for a long time. Can I make a point of knowing what's going on? Because if somebody misses touch for 10 weeks and he has not seen even a call from you and the 11th week and ingia from Lango and you go like, oh, look at you. I missed you. How now? <laughs> you missed me and you never even reached out to me. To see where I am, you don't know whether I was sick. Let us be people who manifest the love of Christ. Watcha to pendane. The third one, you know, John chapter 15, verse 8. John chapter 15, verse 8. In a summer, by this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So, a disciples, a disciple is fruitful in his or her work with Christ. You as a disciple, you must be fruitful. Yesu Christo alitwambia wewe, uki abide in him, you will bear fruit. And if you are in his word, you have fellowship, the obvious thing you will do is that you will be fruitful in your own personal life. Kwa sababu, if kuokoka ni transformation even unapoto ushuda ushuda yako it should be before Christ and after Christ hiyo ndio ushuda kusema mimi kitambo before Christ I was this way and after Christ I was this way see that's a fruit of the Holy Spirit in you in that you have been transformed. Kitambo ulikuwa ni mwenye kupenda udaku. Squeezy upendi udaku. Kitambo ulikuwa ni mtu wenye kubugia mvinyo. Squeezy hizo vitu uliwacha. On top of that, another way of being fruitful is wanting now to get people from that other side. Mi nilitonga testimony hapa before tuende nyambite. Nikasama I have never led someone to Christ. Because even when we went and did evangelism, somehow in a kamungo, I can't put it. Shamba, I'm going to come away. 
and whatever uh, mbegu nilikuwa na rush <laughs> zilikuwa zinangukia mawe but then i was happy tulikuwa na nyambite having to lead someone in christ and i can say nyambite was good because from there hata get rice quiz nikienda <laughs> god amenijalia ninapata pale kuna udengo mzuri na you find that you lead someone to christ so it is good unapokuwa when you disciple of christ you be fruitful in your life the way you are being transformed inside when you nageuzwa na pia kupenda kuzaa you know even the word of god natuambia tukuwe fruitful even in our own sasa ile physically in that you became of when you were born na umelewa na mzazi umekuwa alafu baadaye ukapata bibi mkaoa you be fruitful na mnajaza so the same way pia in our own walk with Christ kuwa na hiyo tamaa ya yes i was saved i would also like to go there and maybe share this word with someone else na pia yeye atoke pande ile ambayo ninakwenda kuzimu na kuje pande hii and it is something that is wonderful so next let's go to Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 Matthew 6:24 inasema hivi that no one can serve two masters for either he will hate one and love the other or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon so on that point we will say that a disciple is single minded in service to christ a disciple is single minded in his service of christ we have an example of this second uh, guy who came to christ na nataka kumfuata but we cannot say he is single minded because he's saying lord let me first go and bury my father if you have been called by christ na amekwambia follow me you should be single minded hakuna kitu nakutoa kwa ile kitu amekuitia amekwambia come follow me and i'll make you fishers of men and if you've been called to be a fish of men that's what you should do single mindedly bila ku yumba yumba kando ama pande nyingine so next let's go to luke chapter 14 verse 26 luke 14:26 luke 14:26 nasema If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. So for that one we'll say that a disciple has no rivals for his or her devotion to Christ. Kama if Christ has called you to be a disciple and you have accepted the call you you hakuna kitu ambayo inafaa inakufanya you can say i will serve you but kufai kuna but it should be there are no hindrances there are no rivals if i love my wife more than i love christ i cannot be a disciple if i love my son more than I love christ i cannot be his disciple being his disciple in a manisha like when you gideon alisema that me and my house will serve you but at the end of the day it is me i will serve you because even your house wanaza kuvuta nyuma kwa sababu labda you know wewe ni mtu mzima and your wife is mtu mzima and so when you are being called to go and serve and he, she becomes a hindrance or he becomes a hindrance you should be have the courage to say uh, excuse me but i think 
I have to obey Christ and not man. Even those people ambao, uh, the, the disciples, walipokuwa, the apostles, walipokuwa on a hard time, na wale viongozi, in the book of Acts, wanapuambi wa sifunza neno, waliwambia, we must obey man, we must obey God, and not man. So, the same Luke, chapter 14, now verse 27, inasema, and whoever does not bear his cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. So you're not a sema. A disciple will follow Christ through good and bad times. Following Christ to Mesama is not a walk in the park. Kuna sauta skia. I think today I don't feel like going to church. I think today I should not go to that fellowship. I think the distance Niko Nimbali, I cannot make it. I think <laughs> one to Kifunzo Mamba Evangelism, Kitambo Sana, we had a very funny comment that was made to Lupenda Pastor Flani to graduate. And he said, I'm very happy to graduate here because I've tried to tell my people we need to go outside there to leave this comfortable church and go there and to speak to people about salvation. And people are fearful. People are saying, oh no, you know, pastor, mimi ni meitwa kusav within the church ukundani. I've not been called to serve uko inji. Which is understandable because people will fear. Maybe I don't have a message. What will I go to tell people? I don't know how to share. Uh, you know, most of the time, I am dependent on pastor to answer those difficult equations. Now you are telling me to go there and say this stuff. How will I? So a disciple will follow Christ through good and bad times. Kama ni muanafunzi, uta stahimili. There are times it will be hard. Uta kwa na disappointments. Chuck Smith alisema, one hard thing about ministry is that you do and they are happy. You do, and they are happy. And when you don't do, they will even kick you in the teeth because you are not able to do. So, you may do, and they are happy. Na ufanya zaidi, na wakwe happy zaidi. And when you are unable to do, they will kick you, and you will feel discouraged. But you should be able to endure. Jikaze. Kabwe ni monafunzi, kutakuwa na hard time but at the end of the day you feel that because ni kazi ya Mungu you have to endure and the last one Luke chapter 14 verse 33 so likewise whoever of you does not forsake all that he cannot let me through here so likewise whoever Whoever of you does not forsake all that he has, he has cannot be my disciple. So a disciple does not have, does not love the things of this world. Kama ewe, ni mfuasi wa Yesu Christo, you must be prepared kuachana na yote. Unajua, the world has a lot of allures. Vitu ambazo unona zinafuraisha. Vitu ambazo unasikia Hii singependa kuwacha saa hii Ningependa Nikae na yo for some few time But With time Unajua I've heard a preacher speak about salvation And he said that when you get saved There are things that will go Automatically One time You know uh, You are a drunkard Ile kiwi apombe inesha mbara moja but some things will linger. But by the grace of God, utaenda ukikuwa perfected. Hizo vitu utaenda zo ukiziwacha. But you must be willing to forsake all. Kuna vitu luko mependa. Like for me, I used to love to play football. And so I got employed. So I had to weigh employment nampira. You know, employment 
gives you the ability to pay your own rent, buy your own food, and buy things that can make you happy. But this football, I could be too. So I chose work other than Ile. Napia Nilipokoka, I had friends that for me to meet them, I could not make time for Bible study. So I had to cut. So you, a disciple, you'll be willing to forsake all for the sake of Christ. Even his disciples, they had to forsake their creative business, labda their fishing business, Likonafanya Vizuri, Mtukama Matthew, Labda Likwa Mefika Pahali, Ileta Geta Kapatuana Romans, Likwana Sapas, Nanabaki na Faida Mingi. But then there comes a time when Christ Amekuita, you have to forsake all for the for the sake of Christ. So I think is our point Saba, they are good points for us. To go even at home, go revisit. Because those are not opinion. They are from the word of God. References. Go Zerudie and Maswali. Have I been a good disciple of Christ? If kuna kuna improvement, there's always room for improvement. Let me pray. Then the worship time worship team will come. And they'll take us through some worship. So, our Lord and our God, we come before you. We thank you for the time of the world. Thank you even for speaking to us, even from your word, even for those seven points that you have seen of a true, the marks of a true disciple. We pray that, Lord, even as we retreat in our own houses, even for the next week, Lord that we revisit, that we'll have a time even to check our life and look and say have we been good disciples of you our Lord and our Savior and where we need to make amends Lord we pray that Lord you will enable us, you will give us the uh, confidence even to make those changes Lord, we know we fall short in many areas but we pray that Lord with your grace you will make it possible for us Lord Father to be to be perfected, even in your word. I pray that, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen.